Hi everybody, Dan Ullman here with the DRF Bets Race of the Day for Sunday, November the 4th. It's race number 8 at Santa Anita, the Grade 2 Twilight Derby. We are going one mile and an eighth on the turf for three-year-olds. You can bet the race with a DRF Bets account. This race part of that mandatory Rainbow Six payout. You get a 300% deposit match when you sign up for your new DRF Bets account at Bets. .drf.com. Here's the field for the Grade 2 Twilight Derby. It's a full field and some really nice three-year-olds in here. You can download free Formulator Pass performances for the race on the Race of the Day event page at drf.com. Access them, handicap along with me. We'll take the field in post position order, beginning with the number one, Have At It, who ships west from New York. And how many times have we seen this in the past? East Coast-based turf horses shipped to Southern California, and they make hay. Have At It has good tactical speed. A really Really nice inside post position for Joel Rosario and is entering this race sharp off a win at this distance in the Hill Prince Stakes, a race in which he got a great trip, saving ground after breaking from the inside post, easing out to the top of the stretch, then altering course back down to the inside to get the job done at 11 to 1. He's a rock solid horse coming into this race in career form, and I really think a good trip could be coming. We're going to handicap the time form U.S. pace projector because I'm not sure I agree with the pace projector for this race. I certainly don't agree with the red bar indicating that there's going to be a fast pace. Perhaps the number two Prince Earl can make the lead, but he hasn't been on the lead in any of his two lifetime starts. Have added the number one has speed, but Christophe Clement trained horses like to be in behind horses. I agree with the pace projector has the number one have added. Maybe the number eight River Boyne will be out there on the lead. Some might argue he's the best horse, and if he can control a moderate pace, he'll be very tough to catch. The three Majestic Eagle has at least shown gate to wire speed in the past. Maybe he'll be up close, but I'm not sure if the pace will be fast. I think it'll be fair. I think wherever he is, the number two Prince Earl is going to be very dangerous. Two for two in his career for trainer Phil D'Amato, and yes, he got a nice trip in winning his first start against winners. That on September the 1st, sitting in the pocket, altering course to the outside at the quarter pole, but I like the way he finished, and his two races have produced two really solid buyer speed figures of 87 and 93. He's going to have to stretch out now to a mile and an eighth, but I think he has enough pedigree to handle it. And at 6 to 1 on the morning line, he offers some value. The 3 is Majestic Eagle, and Majestic Eagle can be close to the pace, as you see on the projector. And I'm just going to draw a line through his most recent start. That race was at Keeneland over soft going, and I don't think he appreciated that ground at all. He is going to get firm turf. That's what he wants in Southern California uh, in the Twilight Derby. And he ran well in the Del Mar Derby two starts back after breaking from a tough outside post position. He did have a really nice trip when winning three starts back, and that's what kind of bothers me a little bit. He set a perfect spot down towards the inside. One of the pace setters bolted and he just shot on through. And then he won that race despite uh, you know, failing to change leads in the stretch. Uh, Majestic Eagle is sharp, gets back on firm turf. I think I prefer him underneath. The number four, Kazan, easily outran his 50 to 1 odds when finishing ahead of six of these common foes in the Grade 2 Del Mar Derby. Now, he was outrun in the early portion of that race. Martin Garcia didn't panic. He got him very comfortable. He swung wide as turning into the stretch, and he came with a good solid rally in his first start in this mile and an eighth distance. It vindicated his prior two starts, both off the pace wins. Now, Kazan, who you see, the number four, far behind in this fast paced situation, he would appreciate it if time. Form US is right and I am wrong concerning the pace because he may need a fast pace to adequately set up his kick. The number five, Pubilius Cyrus, I thought as a two-year-old was going to emerge as one of the better three-year-old turf horses perhaps in the entire country. And it appeared he was on his way to doing so, winning his seasonal debut going down the hill at six and a half furlongs in the Baffle Stakes. But then he went to the sidelines. He has had, obviously, some sort of problems that have kept him from racing. He came back in the Del Mar Derby. It was a very tough spot off a long layoff. He got tired late. If he can return to the form that he showed as a two-year-old, the form that he showed earlier this year, Pubilius Cyrus at 15 to 1 on the morning line, you see is tactical enough to stay within range. He's an intriguing long shot. Desert Stone is the number six, and he's another horse that would need a fast pace, I think, in order to win. I liked his race in the Oceanside, two starts back at a mile. He didn't break well. He was buried inside for most of the way, and I thought he finished nicely and galloped out great. I thought it set him up well for the Del Mar Derby, and I bet him 
home at 16 to 1. And he just didn't fire. He was in a little bit of traffic in the stretch again. But I wonder if he's hit his peak with that 86 buyer two starts back. And I'm not sure that's good enough to win a race like this. We'll move on to Epical, the number seven. And I think Epical has a puncher's chance in here at 20 to 1. I thought he ran just as well as the winner Andesh back on October the 5th at Santa Anita. There wasn't a lot of pace. Andesh got the jump on Epical turning into the lane. But Epical still finished with a little bit of interest. He did get a nice trip when finished second to Majestic Eagle. Three starts back at Del Mar where Victor Espinosa wisely dropped him into the inside on the turn, eased him out. And he was just simply second best to Majestic Eagle. He's a solid horse. He needs to step forward. Another one that might be able to make your exotics underneath. The eight is River Boyne and he's perhaps the horse to beat. We've got a formulator fact for trainer Jeff Mullins. Over the past five years with three-year-olds competing in turf routes off two to four month layoffs, 31% winners in a $3.49 ROI. River Boyne was really the only part of the pace in the Del Mar Derby to still hang on at the end and I thought it was a good performance despite him being beaten as the even money favorite. He was prompting the pace throughout, attacked on the turn, took over the lead and then was just no match for the closers. If he gets an easier pace scenario here, I think he is very dangerous. He has proven that a mile and an eighth is no issue at all and I'd like Flavian Pratt to get aggressive and try and control this race from the start. This horse is a perfect four for four at Santa Anita and is a must use in the pick six. The nine is Platinum Warrior who made his North American debut at Arlington Park in the grade one secretariat stakes. That race featured a very fast pace and Platinum Warrior who was at the back of the pack came with a good solid late run to finish fourth. The secretariat while faster than the Arlington Million also at a mile and a quarter that day at Arlington has not exactly come back very strong and John Sadler doesn't have great numbers with these kind of horses. Over the past five years with three-year-old turf horses making their first start after a trainer switch, he is zero for 21. This horse has a strong late kick, but like many European horses, isn't fast out of the gate and is likely to need a good contested pace to come with a run. The 92 buyer speed figure earned in the secretariat fits with these horses. Andesh completes the field. I thought he got a nice trip last time out, the old in-out under Flavian Prap to win that race behind a slow pace in the Del Mar Derby. While he didn't break very well, I thought he had his chance and just wasn't good enough, and now he's got to deal with the tough outside post position. He does go out for a very good trainer in Phil D'Amato, and maybe Tiago Pereira will be aggressive out of there and to try to get a good spot early if there isn't a lot of pace developing in the opening quarter mile. Let's take a look at my top selection for the Grade 2 Twilight Derby. I believe that River Boyne is the horse to beat, but I've been very impressed with the number two Prince Earl's two lifetime starts, both victories, both coming from slightly off the pace. If Rafael Bejarano wants to make the lead, he can. If not, he can sit just off. He should be a strong factor turning into the lane, and Phil D'Amato is a very good trainer that doesn't place his horses where he doesn't feel they can they they don't fit. A six to one on the morning line for Prince Earl. It's gonna be my top selection in here. I'm gonna go two, eight, nine, and one in the grade two Twilight Derby, a race you can play with your very own DRF Bets account. Sign up for a 300% deposit match at bets.drf.com. Approximate post time for the Twilight Derby 250 Pacific. Good luck.